Hello and welcome back to my channel if you did not know my name is Robin and it is getting towards the end of the year which means we get to do my favourite thing, my favourite videos to film and that is my worst books of 2023 now which is <laughs> terrifying to say but I am so excited to talk about these books and of course I will be doing my favourite books of 2023. I try to leave these as late as possible because I read quite a bit over the Christmas period and so I'm trying to leave it as late as possible. My favourite list of 2023 is still growing <laughs> with some books that I'm reading currently so that is a work in progress but I can confidently say that these are my worst books of 2023. So I'm going to start off with my DNFs actually uh, before we get into the real meat of it and these are books that by the title I could not finish and usually I'm not one of those people that does a DNF but I thought this is my year to just enjoy actual literature that I enjoy and not force myself to do it because when I was forcing myself to read it put me in a reading slump and it's just not worth it. It's not worth doing. Uh, so next year if you haven't been DNFing things it saves your attitude towards reading so much and I definitely suggest doing it. I know it's difficult but it's worth it. So my first DNF was actually a book club book and that is Sister Song. I had such high hopes for Sister Song because this is everything that I love in a book. It's historical fiction, it's mythology, um, trans queerness, like there's everything in this book. There's a sisterly bond. There are so many elements to it. This book is so incredibly long and every single chapter felt like such a slog to try and get through. And I probably read, I would say, I would say the first hundred pages and I just couldn't get through it. There are three perspectives from three sisters and there was only one sister that I actually enjoyed listening to their perspective of. So I just felt like the other two chapters, I was just waiting to get back to the third one. And yeah, I just I just didn't enjoy it. I really didn't enjoy it. There was only one interesting plot line for me and we didn't really dive into it enough and it just felt like, it felt like a B plot when it was sort of made out to be the main plot of the book. So it was, it's disappointing because I know a lot of people absolutely love this book and I genuinely had such high hopes about loving this book. But my other friends in book club who read it just said that the book was pretty much the same as the first hundred pages. So if I wasn't gonna like it, I wasn't going to like it all the way through. So I did not finish this book. The second and the last book I DNF was For Her Consideration and this book was, I was so excited to read this book. And then I can deal with cringy dialogue, okay? But this line. It's been a while. Was all I could manage to eke out finally. It sure has. There really was a rumor you'd died, but I never believed it. I shrugged because in a way I had. How did that old pop song go? The old Nina couldn't come to the phone because she was dead. That line made me close my app and just put my phone in my pocket. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done with reading. No more for me. <laughs> it was one of the worst things. And like, there were cringy lines throughout and I don't mind occasionally, you know, a bit cringy, but... <sighs> Already these, these, I say cringy, like we should be free of cringe, but I say these lines already feel dated. And it's like Gino Dawson who writ Her Majesty's Royal Coven, there are a lot of references to the 90s in there. And like she says when she was writing her book, using references is a very tricky thing because you have to use references that don't basically date themselves. You need to use references that are already solid references that we still use to this day and that's why she loves the 90s she grew up in the 90s and it felt like a solid point to make references from when this book <laughs> making references for taylor swift songs and like oh it just oh it, it made me my skin crawl i just couldn't do it i couldn't read it and i don't care how good the book was or how good the romance was in it because it is a um lesbian romance book I just could not get through these chapters without like physically cringing and so it just definitely wasn't for me. If you enjoyed it that's completely fair but for me it just, ah, oh. <laughs> it's just the 
way she said it. Maybe I shouldn't have consumed it via audiobook because, like, the way that she was saying it, I was just like, it's really not that serious, but thank you. <laughs> okay, so moving on to books that I did finish but didn't enjoy. So the first one, we actually have a comic, and that is Clementine. If you are big into uh, queer comics, you will have heard of On a Sunbeam, which I do have, and it's <laughs> it's huge, um, by Tilly Walden. And that's a really incredible book. And I remember it being quite big. Um, it came out in 2018 and I remember it being quite big and people talking about it. And it is a really fantastic comic. I really loved On a Sunbeam. And during the new year, last year, I bought this because I think it's only just sort of like recently came out. This is her most recent book. This is a, a YA comic set in like a zombie apocalypse and it's apparently set in the same world as The Walking Dead as well. It's just what it says on the back, I haven't done any research about it. <laughs> it follows a 17 year old girl called Clementine who is trying to survive in this post-apocalyptic world on, a, on her own as well and she's disabled as well so we see how from her point of view it is to survive in this world. During her travels she bumps into another teenager called Amos and both of them decide that they have heard rumours that there is going to be this place that is setting up that's going to be completely free of zombies. So they decide to head towards that place and when they get there they see that it is a abandoned ski resort and it's full of teenagers who are trying to make this a zombie free zone and because of the cold and the weather they just think that the zombies won't approach and they haven't done so far so um, they want to make this haven basically. But they soon get to winter and they will have to survive the winter and the zombies become less of their focus as they try to survive each other. I'm not really a big YA lover and my, maybe that's why I didn't enjoy this, but this is set in a world with zombies. They exist, or they're called walkers because it's the Walking Dead universe. But um, there is this is a universe set with walkers and they are hardly mentioned at all. And I'm completely fine with that, it, you know, having, you know, the atmosphere and having that in the back of your mind just to think about them in this situation. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have the setting and not really talk about it, but it just didn't add anything. And if this was set in any normal, like, apocalypse style thing, I wouldn't have known that this was a Walker situation because I don't think it's ever mentioned or they are ever seen in this. It just didn't get talked about enough to justify their existence, basically, for me. I didn't find the story compelling. I couldn't relate to any of the characters, but again, I am 24 and this is a YA book to why this might have not connected for me, so I understand that. <laughs> but I just didn't connect with any of the characters, I didn't really like any of the characters, and the action just sort of happens towards the end of this, and it just wasn't very exciting, it wasn't very interesting, and it's a shame because I, I, I was quite excited about this, and there's meant to be multiple editions of this, this is meant to be a series, and I have no interest in reading the rest of the series. I think I gave this two stars. So the next book I want to talk about is The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea. Wow. <laughs> I feel really bad because I had some big, big hopes for this and maybe that's why I was burned <laughs> with not enjoying it. I bought this book because I'm an ob, flag means death girly. I am obsessed with that show and when I watched the first season earlier this year I needed something to fill the R Flag Means Death hole and so I was going on different like Buzzfeed lists and other like just googling what books are like R Flags Mean Death and The Mermaid, The Witch, The Sea got suggested a lot of times and so I picked this book up. In fact I actually did a review about this book because it was my blind date with the book and Wow. <laughs> it was just so disappointing. This book follows two main characters. Um, one of them is called Flora or Florian. Florian is a girl but she identifies as a man to sort of hide herself on this ship. He does come out as gender fluid. I will be using different pronouns for Florian but he is hiding himself on this ship because he's with a bunch of pirates. The ship is sold to people as like a, basically like a taxi ship, so it takes you to one port to another. But we soon find out through the character Evelyn that this is not true. 
Evelyn is our second character and they are both like love interests of each other. Uh, and Evelyn is from a, you know, all fur coat, no knickers family, so they look very rich and expensive, but because they don't have any money, they have decided to sell Evelyn off to a military man. So she is being forced onto this ship to go to her new husband. And, you know, this just happens in the old days all the time. <laughs> and while she's on this ship, Flora falls in love with Evelyn and they decide to escape the ship. But because of some things that happen, they both get torn apart. And then towards the end, they find themselves back together. And initially I thought that this was like a really exciting concept for a book because obviously I did. And wow, what a disappointment. It genuinely was so disappointing. This is from the author Maddie Takuda Hall. And um, I have to say that the things I loved about this book is she talks a lot about um, imperialism and colonialism within this book. And I think it's a lot of things that we don't talk about when we watch pirate movies, pirate shows, anything like that. We don't talk about how imperialism and colonialism was such a big part of pirates. And so I really enjoyed the, these conversations. I also really enjoyed having genderqueer characters. It's not something you see very much in books. So I really, really appreciated that. That's sort of where it stops because the romance in this book is horrifically, and I use that word <laughs> quite heavily, horrifically underbaked. These two characters do not show any signs of loving or affection to each other at all. And so it, you cannot convince me that they were maids for each other and they can't stop thinking about each other because before they escape the ship, they do not speak to each other whatsoever in a way that seems endearing or loving. And so I don't think that they deserve to be together at the end because they just doesn't make any sense to me, basically. And when they come back together, yeah, I, they have no chemistry at all. There's also a major, I would say major plot line in this, that Flora is a witch, and that just never gets talked about after the fact. And it's such a big part of the book, um, in the middle where they both lose each other, and we're seeing it from their perspectives, and where they are, and how they're trying to get back. and. Florian has been taken in by this witch who's like, you're a witch, you're fantastic. And then we never hear anything about it ever again when Flora runs away and that's it. <laughs> and so like, it just doesn't make any sense to shoehorn that into the book if you were going to expand on that. I've written down, it's a melting pot of different ideas, but someone's forgot to turn it on. And I feel... <laughs> It feels quite harsh to say, but it is the truth. And it's just a shame because I was really excited, um, but it is what it is. You know, I appreciated some of the commentary, but that was about it. So the next book I want to talk about is Tell Me Everything. And again, I read this for book club and I hated it. Book club decided because we've had quite a few very depressing reads that, you know, we were just going to have like a palate cleanser, quite easy uh, romance book. And... I appreciate them for giving us that, but I just didn't enjoy this book at all. It's a romance novel with a messy main character. The main character is called Natasha and she's a therapist who spends her days telling people how to get through their lives together, but can't seem to get her own together. She has a very messy love life and she is still bunking with her ex-girlfriend. And then she meets a girl called Margot and this inspires her to change her habits for the better. And I would say if you like romance books, this will probably be right up your alley. It's got, you know, messy main, main character. I would say it's like a little bit of a twist at the end. Just for me, it's just not really what I look for in reading. I know many people would appreciate a palette cleanser, but I, yeah, it's not really my sort of thing. The next book we have is actually going to be quite a controversial one because I think everybody loved this book, but Frontier. I read Frontier. I had it pre-ordered. I was really excited about it because it was called like cowboys, uh, cowboys and lesbians in space. And I was like, that's everything. That's everything I've ever wanted from a book. And I was so disappointed because it just felt so incredibly boring to read. I found myself struggling to pick the book up to try and finish it. And this is one I should have DNF'd, but 
it just it genuinely took me such a long time to read this book and it's only a very short book as well. This book is set on earth in the future where climate change has basically killed us all out and now we live on a desolate planet and the people that do survive just have to try and survive it basically. One night a ship falls from the sky but it's been over 300 years since we've been in contact with aliens and a lone ranger steps out and they are looking for their lost love. So I again this is like a really exciting uh, premise of set in the future, desolate planet, lesbian cowboys in space, um, lost loves looking for each other. It's sort of like everything I would have loved from a book but I just don't think it was executed that well. Just seemed very boring and we also don't really get enough of each other's longing for each other to really you know get that home to why it's so important for them to meet up together. I love it when characters are raw and uh, don't mind expressing their emotions and their softness towards their partner. I really wish we had that build of like longing and missing and I wish we could have built that up so when they do come together at the end it has like a full crescendo moment and I just don't feel like it did that enough for me. The last book I'm going to talk about is In the Deep End by Kate Davis. This book for me did not go down well at all. <laughs> the only thing I liked about this book is the woman who was doing the audiobook for it made it, she, she was fantastic, 10 out of 10, I love the voice actress for that but everything else was absolutely not for me. I would say we have like another romance book here so maybe it's just you know me and romances just don't really mix together but that's fine. We have the main character Julia who hasn't had sex in three years uh, and she comes to the realisation that she is a lesbian. But this is where I really hated the book because she goes to a man's apartment or uh, flat and they have quite a, a bad coming together basically and she goes home and her friend makes an offhand remark of being like are you sure you're not a lesbian and she's like that's it I'm a lesbian and then like two days later she's signed up for clubs she's signed up for like lesbian swing dance and stuff like this like she's done all this and I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying that people have easier coming out but I, I just know from my experience that my my like lesbian journey my queer journey itself has probably been like five years in the making of just like trying to unlearn everything I know it's not what this author was going for but like that itself just didn't feel right to me and I was very surprised to learn that this author was actually gay <laughs> because I, I genuinely thought a straight woman had written this book. She goes to like a queer salsa class and then she meets this polyamorous lesbian called Sam who she doesn't know is polyamorous to start off with I believe. The relationship actually becomes quite turbulent and toxic because Sam sort of forces her into the polyamory relationship. Julia and Sam have a very turbulent relationship and Sam ends up to be quite toxic, controlling and um, manipulative and so they, you know, end up breaking up and, you know, everyone gets a happy ending, you know, this and that. But for me, I just didn't enjoy it. It is meant to be a humour book. It's meant to be full of comedy. I got no, I got, I got no comedy from it. It wasn't funny. I didn't get the, obviously I didn't really get the romance from it because who Julia ends up with, we meet them for two seconds at the end. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it just wasn't fun for me. I didn't enjoy it. That is my list. Let me know what your guys' list was because I'm very interested to find out what you hated this year. And yeah, just drop your uh, list down below. And thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And I shall see you next time. Bye.